What's happening everybody? Trey here joined as always by my dad Sean and today reactions to the classics. We're gonna react to Mr. Gordon Lightfoot and one of the Canadian treasures in yes. music uh, in their musical history and we're gonna react to what many consider to be his best song definitely we got the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald and we've done a lot of Gordon Lightfoot reactions and uh, we somehow have not got to this song. I know uh, we had so <laughs> many suggest almost every reaction we put up we also have an album review of mm -hmm. almost every one of them has uh, tells us to do this so. that's right and this comes courtesy of suggestion from our longtime supporter and uh, the guy who introduced us to Gordon exactly. Lightfoot Josh so Thank you, Josh. Thank Always you, Josh. shout out to you and all the patrons who help keep this channel For sure. going. Um, before we get into the quick facts of this track, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That helps us out, as well as hit that big red subscribe button. And you can also check out our Patreon if you want us to react to a track as well. But uh, this, uh, you know, actually had a, a decent amount of success when it came out as well um, uh, in uh, in the mid '70s. Just on the chart, went to two here in the states yep. actually, and went to number one. Uh, in his native Canada. Uh, it's his second most successful single here in the U.S. behind only Sundown, which we, we are familiar mm -hmm. with. Um, overseas is only a minor hit. He wrote it uh, based on a Newsweek article he had read uh, called The Cruelest Month, published in November of 75, about the sinking of the bolt carrier, the mm -hmm. Edmund Fitzgerald on Lake Superior. So I know it's an epic song. Yeah. It's long. People love it. It's probably going to be Gordon at his best. We both have become uh, big fans of his. Oh, definitely. And I, it's interesting. The album version, which is what we're doing, is 632. The single edit still 557. Yeah, I know. It's so like, why bother even <laughs> cutting off? Yeah, you know, 35 seconds. I guess to keep it under six. I don't know. But uh, as always, we're going to have the lyrics pulled up on our respective computers. We'll listen, and especially with Gordon, enjoy the track. Yeah. And then afterwards, give our thoughts. So thank you again, Josh. Thanks, Josh. I'm always. looking forward to this one for sure. Let's get it. The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down Up the big lake they call Gitchagumi The lake it is said never gives up her dead When the skies of November turn gloomy With a load of iron ore 26,000 tons more Than the Edmund Fitzgerald weighed empty that good ship and true was a bone to be chewed when the gales of November came early. The ship was the pride of the American side, coming back from some mill in Wisconsin. As the big freighters go, it was bigger than most, with a crew and good captain well seasoned. Concluding some terms with a couple of steel firms When they left fully loaded for Cleveland Then later that night when the ship's bell rang Could it be the north wind they'd been feeling? The wind and the wires made a tattletale sound Every man knew as the captain did too Twas the witch of November come stealing The dawn came late and the breakfast had to wait When the gales of November came slashing When afternoon came it was freezing rain In the face of a hurricane west wind Gordon taking us on a journey, man, which I appreciate because I know nothing of this story. <laughs> when supper time came, the old cook came on deck saying, Fellas, it's too rough to feed you. At 7 p.m., a main hatchway gave in. He said, Fellas, it's been good to know you. Wired in, he had water coming in, and the good ship and crew was in peril. And later that night, when 
and his lights went out of sight Came the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald Does anyone know where the love of God goes When the waves turn the minutes to hours The searchers all say they'd have made Whitefish Bay If they'd put 15 more miles behind her They might have split up or they might have capsized They may have broke deep and took water all that remains is the faces and the names Of the wives and the sons and the daughters Heavy line, man, heavy line Lake Huron Roll Superior Sings in the rooms of her ice water mansion Old Michigan steams like a young man's dreams The islands and bays are for sportsmen And farther below Lake Ontario Takes in what Lake Erie can send her The iron boats go as the mariners all know With the gales of November remembered Fitzgerald, what a uh, what a epic song. I mean, Gordon's known uh, obviously to just be a great storyteller. Uh, the one that sticks out in my mind that also was along was uh, the Canadian Railroad trilogy. That was fantastic. Um, you know, just taking you on a, a journey like that, and this, of course, uh, a, a heavy heavy topic to to detail out. But I just. Uh, gotta state the obvious. I thought it was just an expertly written song um, here, and uh, th for me, a guy who knew nothing uh, of this event, um, I, I thought Gordon did a great job educating me. Yeah, it said he liked to sail on the Great Lakes. That's why I kind of had a connection okay. to what happened. Twenty nine people uh, died on this thing. I was reading that he. First of all, I don't know if I know this song or not. Okay, mm. obviously it's epic. I was too young to remember it, but. Maybe I just think I know it sounds mm. familiar to me because, you know, it sounds like Gordon, a lot of the instrumentation. Yeah. And the, so I'm not sure if I know this song or not. If I do know it, I don't know it incredibly well. But I read that he was very nervous writing the song. He was apprehensive mm. about getting the facts wrong. Okay. You know, because you do have 29 people who lost their yeah. lives and families and things. And finally, his producer just told him, dude, just tell a story. So mm -hmm. there are some things that aren't exactly right. I mean, nothing big. No, um, it still it still gets the message across. It gets across. the message across. But there's nothing in here 
that uh, is really too far off. I mean, it says they're full, fully loaded for Cleveland. They're going to Detroit first and coming back to Cleveland. Um, the last radio transmission, um, instead of water coming in, was holding our own. Mm. Um, I thought it was funny. Uh, he talks about the Mariner's Church of Detroit uh, as the Maritime Sailors Cathedral. And a parishioner of that church actually uh, wrote him to tell him that the church is not musty. Because he ah, said a musty old hall. So go. after that, he now sings in a rustic old hall. <laughs> so just stuff like that. Um, and there was no crew error. They found out way later on in like 2010. Mm. So he's kind of changed a little bit there. But uh, yeah, for it's the most fantastic. part, yeah. I mean, he got it. He nailed it. I mean, your point is is absolutely right. He nailed it. What a great song. Um, and you know, a lot of uh, it, he just puts you right there, especially yeah. like uh, you know, when he puts you on the ship as well with those lines. When supper time came, the old cook came on deck saying, "Fellas, it's too rough to feed you." It's seven. PM, a main hatchway caved in. He said, "Fellas, it's been good to know you." Like that. That was one of my favorite set of lyrics on this. Um, and uh, just describing the wreck itself um, yeah. was uh, was you know pretty pretty powerful as well. And then uh, whenever he noted uh, about that cathedral, the church bell chimed till it rang twenty nine times for each man on the Edmund Fitzgerald, and that just kind of brings it home. Like, oh man, there was a, a big loss of life yeah, here uh, going. Uh, going in and uh just so his description of not only the ship but the the people on it the storm itself just everything kind of came together in a a wonderful wonderful way so you know like like we always talk about these singer songwriters but what lyrics like there is a lot of lyrics to the song you know a lot of songwriters purposely who are the artists themselves who are writing their own songs would purposely over the years not write tons of lyrics to songs because they were already thinking of how they're going to remember right. them all in live performances as they pile on top of each other. So you got to really bring it to bring mm-hmm. a song like this and be able to carry it out. Yeah, what a fantastic suggestion, Josh. Oh, definitely. And uh, going to overall score off of First Listen, man, um, you know, I'm not going to say it's like my favorite Gordon Lightfoot song after First Listen, but it's up there, man. It's pretty freaking uh, epic, lived up to the hype. Yeah. I'm going to go on eight... Uh, Eight five on this. I thought the we didn't even mention the electric guitar that I thought was a uh, uh, the the perfect perfect instrumentation choice to kind of uh, give a little punch to this track. Well, this is the second song reaction in a row, Trey. That's why I laughed there when you took the same grade as I. <laughs> hey, I'm yeah. also gonna be at an eight point five, which is insanely high mm. for a first listen. Once again. Thank you very much, Josh. Great suggestion. Definitely. Let us know your thoughts on this tune down in the comment section below. And until next time, thanks for watching. Happy listening, and we will see ya.